Welcome to Solar 101 for the Richmond Solar Co-op. I'm glad you could join us. Some housekeeping uh, just to uh, make sure that you can hear, test your mic, but also submit your questions in the chat. I don't, I'm on my own, so I'll have to look at them. We'll take a break in between each session, each section. And as you've just heard, the webinar is being recorded and we'll share a link with anyone who is RSVP'd. First, we want to thank our partners for helping get the word out about this co-op, um, Houston Electric Vehicle Association, Houston Renewable Energy Group, Sierra Club Houston, Citizens Climate Lobby Houston, and Texas Interfaith Power and Light. And I am Dory Wolf. I'm the Houston Area Program Coordinator for Solar United Neighbors. And I, as I mentioned, I'm a longtime solar homeowner, over 25 years. And I care about solar because I feel it's the most democratic form of energy we have, that we want to see everyone have a piece of the sun. And it's really, really good to reduce my carbon footprint. So I like that. And it's been a good investment over time. Uh, so what is Solar United Neighbors? Key is we're vendor neutral. I'm not here to sell you on any one installer or any one product. We are vendor neutral. We're a nonprofit. And we have our theory of change, which is we help you go solar. We join together and then we fight for our energy rights. In 2007, our executive director, Anya Schoolman, her son came home uh, from school one day and said, ah, we really need to do something, mom. And she was willing to do the work to figure out what the best thing they could do to go solar, but they weren't going to do it alone. And she got 50 of her neighbors to join together in the Mount Pleasant uh, co-op. And since then, she got so much, uh, so many questions from that event that she made a business of it. And now we have members in all 50 states. We've done lots of co-ops and served lots of, uh, and created lots of homes to go solar. So our national impact 7,900 plus families with solar, 67 megawatts of solar installed, saving tons of carbon, of uh, carbon dioxide. So in Texas, I started working, well, actually with Houston Renewable Energy Group, I was doing Solarize Houston. And then in 2018, worked with Sun to do the solar co-ops. And so we've made an impact here in Texas. And we also are working for equity and justice, because again, I feel the sun is the most democratic form of energy. We need to have it dispersed evenly to all of us. And so we are working to make sure it's fair and equitable. So what we'll cover today is the technology, the economics, and then how the co-op works. So first, solar technology. It's the language. How do solar panels work? They take energy from the sun, photons, excite the electrons, and make uh, electricity. So they convert solar energy to electricity. And they do that in a, in a uh, direct current form. So we'll talk about that. But the panels themselves, silicon and wires, and sandwiched together to make a panel or a module. And then you put the panels or modules together in an array and either ground mount that or put it on your roof. And if you put it on your roof, well, either way you need racking to hold it in place. And that racking can go on an asphalt shingle roof, pitched, it can go on a flat roof, it can go on the ground. But to convert that direct current electricity to alternating current, we need to invert it. We need inverters. And you have two main choices of inverters, the micro inverter that goes on the back of each panel or the string inverter and optimizer. The optimizer goes on behind the panel and the string inverter gets mounted on a wall. So one inverter, many panels versus many little inverters. And that inverts the or energy, changes it from direct current to alternating current which can then be fed into your home and into the grid. 
And so you need to have space, a little bit of space, a couple blank panels in your electric main circuit breaker panel in order to incorporate solar. Uh, most homes have sufficient capacity, but some may need an upgrade before you can get solar. So it's terminology, learning, learning the language, right? So we talk in systems are measured in kilowatts. How many kilowatt system do you have? And the example here is a 4.8 kilowatt array using 400 watt panels. But panels, depending on what's on the market, panel wattage changes. So it's easier to talk about a system in the overall kilowatts. And then for every full hour this array goes in the sun, it would generate um, 4.8 kilowatt hours on average. So kilowatt hours is the electricity produced by that array. And that is what you see on your electric bill right now. How many kilowatt hours you use in a month. You can add all the 12 months together and see how many kilowatt hours you use in a year. And that from that information, the installer, selected installer will come and suggest a size for your home if you wanted to try and you know, produce what you use on average. The average size of a system in Texas is between six and seven kilowatts. There are larger and there are smaller. And it's based on not just what you consume today, but your goals, what you want to be able to do in the future or uh, the size of roof you have available or your budget. You can, you can say, I wanna start with this size array and I'll grow it over time as funds allow or as roof space allows. So those are the four main components, the solar array, your solar inverter, your electric panel, and then the meter. And why we tie into the meter is so that if your home, if you're away from home and you're not using much power, those electrons can go back into the grid and feed your neighbors. And in everywhere else in the world other than Texas, it seems, they call that net metering. That if you pay, say, 10 cents to send out energy to the grid, I mean, to take in energy from the grid, then if it's a one-for-one -one net metering, they should, the utility should pay you 10 cents to get the electrons back. That's not quite how it works right now in deregulated Texas, but that is the basic idea. And they call it in Texas, solar buyback. And um, I'm just going to try and move this off a little bit. The, so they're in Texas, in deregulated market, the retail energy providers are not required to offer a solar buyback. But, and this is very fine print and you're not expected to read it or know it because we can help you with it, but some do and it changes daily or weekly. It changes very often as to who's offering what program. And it gets kind of um, uh, confusing and hard to determine which is the best plan for you. So luckily we have help. We have partnered with Texas Power Guide and they, when you're ready, when you have a proposal in hand and you're ready to see which retail energy provider, if any, you should switch to, uh, Texas Power Guide has a free analysis. You put in your information and give them permission to look at your past usage. They will, based on your time of day usage, based on where your array is gonna be oriented, based on uh, your overall usage, they will recommend the top few best programs so you can get re maximize your return on your investment. So this is sounds confusing, but we have a solution to make it easier for you. All right. And then, so what makes a good roof? It depends on where you are located. Down in Richmond, you know, south is always best. You want to be perpendicular to the sun, but east is good too, and west is good. North is more indirect. You're never going to get direct sunlight when your panels are to the north, but it just, it's not terrible. It's just not as efficient. Your panels won't be as efficient. So you'll be paying a little bit more per watt for those panels on the north side. Um, ideally, little or no shading. Although I say we love our shade trees, right? It keeps the house cooler. So it's a, it's a balance. 
and then enough space to mount, mount the panels. And your installer can help you determine um, how much space you have, what's the maximum panels you could put on there. But again, I want to emphasize you don't have to put the maximum. You can start small. Now, that's solar. And solar, I can you know show you a return on your investment. But with batteries, if you want power, when the power goes out on the grid, as it did during Storm Uri, then you need to have storage. And the reason it, you can't, even if the sun is shining, those solar panels can't feed your home when there's a power outage is because we can't backfeed the electricity into the grid. It's harmful to the uh, grid workers trying to make the grid go, come back on. So if you want, you may want storage if you have frequent utility outages, you have some critical loads at home, or you just want to be prepared for emergencies. I call it, you know, the return on the investment of batteries is peace of mind. I have peace of mind that should something happen, I have I can last through because I can tailor my loads to the sun and my battery. I can watch and I can be, it's like trimming the sails during a storm. So I can last out any storm because every day the sun comes up, even on cloudy days, I can get some power. Uh, but you have to be careful. But so we have a whole guide to help you determine if store, battery storage is right for you and to help you with that. So that's at solarunitedneighbors.org slash storage. And an example of uh, a fictitious Johnson's, they lose power several times a year and each time it's out for an entire day. So they figured they need a 13.5 kilowatt battery bank and they can fully recharge it with their six kilowatt solar array. And, um, and so they can get their one day of power. And if they choose to cut back on some of their uses, then go two days, right? But it won't run their central AC, their condensing unit but it will run the refrigerator, the microwaves and lights and outlets. In our, in our case, we put LED lights in and we have efficient fans. Uh, so we can basically run the whole house minus the central AC. Uh, and yes, if you have electric stove, electric dryer, you wanna not put those on because you don't wanna by accident run down your battery because then you're as if you didn't have a battery. So frequently asked questions, these are some of ours, but if you have some, put them in the chat. And I will just go ahead and go through this and then we'll answer questions at the end. So warranties, uh, panels, it's long-term investment. They're warranted for 25 years and they're warranted to operate. And this is approximate, some panels are different, but at 80% of the nameplate value. So they're still ticking after 25 years. So it's a good investment. Um, the inverters, the micro inverters, 25 year warranty as well. And the string inverters usually 10 to 12, but they're, you can extend those. I think of inverters as the computer of the system that by the time I'm ready to, uh, if it goes out at 10, 12, 15 years, there'll be a more efficient, less expensive inverter to install in its place. Homeowner's insurance, it's always good. You're making a big investment. It's always good to let your homeowner's insurance know that you've added this investment. I have seen lovely pictures, not lovely, but pictures of a house in Florida that hurricane came through. The roofs that didn't have solar came off but the roof that had the solar stayed on. It's like an additional structural, but I know no guarantees, all right? This, this, we, have, we have extreme weather, but make sure you're insured with that array. With that array. Maintenance, we call it ma low maintenance, right? There's no moving parts. Um, and you, you can, you'll have an app, you can see how it's performing. You can ask your installer to come check on it if it's not up to snuff. And how long do the systems last? Like I said, they keep on ticking 80% of the nameplate value after year 25. So it's a long, good hedge against future electricity prices. Will my HOA allow solar on my home? So we have a couple of good laws in Texas, one of which is even though you just say added $15,000 of value to your home, you can fill out a one-time form and, and not have be taxed. Your property tax will not include that addition. So your MLS sheet increases, but not your property tax. That's one good law. The other is that HOAs, while they, you know, you need to apply, you need to get permission, and they can say, could you move it over here a little bit? If you, if they ask you to change your array, like to the north side, or such that it affects the output more than 10%, they can't do that. And so educating your HOA uh, on what's allowed 
and helping them understand that this is an asset, it's a value to your home. Uh, we've been very successful in, in most HOAs and most solar installations. What if I'm in a historic district? We found that here in the greater Houston area that again, you need to let them know that you're adding solar to your home, uh, but that is not, they, they have been saying, yes, that's not a hindrance. All right, solar economics. <laughs> when I told you I've had solar for over 25 years and when we first put solar in, it was expensive and it was a long, long payback, but we did it for all the reasons I mentioned and I haven't regretted it, but they've dropped in price. So you guys are lucky. Now, these days, depending on whether you do a co-op or, or how hard they're, how hungry the installers are, the price can be anywhere two to $4 a watt. So prices have come down. You also, this is a wonderful period of time, there's a 30% federal tax credit, which steps down at 2032. So, and you can take that over a number of years. If you don't, if your appetite isn't such, tax appetite isn't such that you can take it all in one year, you can spread that out. So we are working to make solar more accessible. And how we do that at Solar United Neighbors is we educate you as you're being educated today. And we bring smart leads to the installer. We say, look, we've met with our neighbors and our friends and we've educated them and they want to look into going solar. And so we've taken down the cost, the soft costs, right? Components have come down, labor cost is trimmed, but not going to get much thinner, but soft costs is where we can help bring down the cost with co-ops. Okay. And then again, the tax credit right now it's 30%. So that's wonderful. There are not any state and local incentives um, of which I'm aware in Texas. So, however, there's also from the Inflation Reduction Act additional um, tax credits and available uh, and rebates available. So, if you do need to do an electrical panel upgrade, you can have that uh, get a rebate for that. If you do buy an electric vehicle, and I'll warn you, this this whole process of going solar is it addictive in the, in the sense that you're like, oh. Now I'm making sun from energy from the sun. I can power my car from the sun and my lawnmower from the sun. And so you, if you get a home charging station, that too uh, can get a rebate. Same with electric heat pumps, battery storage, and induction stoves. I would not, I'm going to change this next time. Say electric induction stove. Very, very cool. Just like gas turns on, turns off instantly. Uh, really easy to tailor to get exactly right and uses much less electricity than electric stoves. Okay, uh, that was a side. So pricing, say you want a four kilowatt array, say you're a typical home and you use about 12,000 kilowatt hours a year. So this four kilowatt array is gonna do you know, around 40% uh, of your, your usage, but you wanna start there. You, you wanna make that investment. And so we've been seeing prices in our co-ops of around 250 a watt, sometimes a little higher, sometimes a little lower. There's adders that make it different price too, but that will all be very much exposed. You'll know what the price per watt is uh, be before you meet with your the installer. So say you at 250 a watt, you decide to go for a four kilowatt array. You're gonna put $10,000 out of pocket initially and then get back 3,000 when you do your federal income tax the following year. And so net out of pocket is 7,000. We're going to help you pick the right retail energy plan through Texas Power Guide. And with the right plan, you will find you know, a savings. And again, this, is, this varies with time. And uh, before Storm Uri, there were higher savings. Now they're a little less. So it's a little longer payback. But it still is an investment. That, not like a car where you plunk down money on a car and you drive off the lot and it is depreciated instantly. This this helps you save money each month. Um, and so at the end of 25 years, you have a net profit. Um, all right, so say, if you, and then if you wanted to do eight kilowatt, which is more closely aligned with your energy usage, so you can have a different kind of payback plan. So your out-of-pocket is 14,000, your savings is doubled as well. Okay, so say you didn't have $14,000 in cash lying around, uh, you, we all would need to consider a loan. And I'll just put my little preference in there to say, watch out for the really long um, 
the really long um, year finances, the 25 year, it just, you're buying this to own a piece of the sun. So, but again, your finances are your own, but take a look at the shorter loans and so that you can still see a profit. All right. So again, we'll help you pick the retail energy plan. You need to look for the loan dealers and there are different ways to get loans. And so you're, you're just balancing the lower monthly payment versus the total interest paid over time. And we can help you uh, if you come to say, I've got a few plans, help me out. We can do a simple spreadsheet analysis. So we have a whole page dedicated at solarunitedneighbors.org slash financing um, to help you make decisions. Uh, there are third-party ownership, PPAs, power purchase agreements and leases. Again, I'm biased towards wanting to own a piece of the sun. Um, and then there are grants if you're out in uh, rural, if you happen to be a farm or a, a rural business, uh, you can have some, there's grant opportunities. And again, we have more help on our site for all of that. So loans, you can go through the installer. The installers will often have what looks like really good programs, and they may be, but they usually often come with a hefty dealer fee to get that low interest rate. So again, we can just help you compare. Um, but it is going to be simplest probably to go through the installer. But if you have can get a home equity line or refinance uh, and include solar, uh, depending on the price of mortgages right now, that often can be a really, really good way. And then um, you can also go through uh, clean energy. Uh, these two credit unions are listed on our financing page. We usually we are vendor neutral, we're bank neutral. But if a national credit union is trying to do the right thing, then we're going to let the, let you all know about it. So these are two credit unions who nationally are trying to be there for solar homeowners. But you can also check out your local credit union. Okay, so we're getting to the third and final part, which is talking about the Richmond Solar Co-op. How does a co-op work? It's a it's. I, I love them because it brings down the price. We, we bring together 30 of our neighbors or more and say to the installers that bid on it, say, look, sharpen your pencil. There's 30 of us that are interested in going solar. And you get support from Sun throughout the process. And you get to connect with fellow solar enthusiasts and become part of a growing movement. So I, I love, I've never met a solar homeowner I haven't liked. And that's just a good, good thing. So it's a, it's a process. You don't have to join a co-op for life, right? You're going to join. It's free to join. There's no obligation to purchase. You just sign up and you go and learn like you're doing today. You sign up and you spread the word because if you can get 50 of your neighbors and friends to join the co-op too and go solar, the price is going to come down for all of us, right? Because the installers will know how many people are in the co-op. So then we help you select an installer. It's going to be selected by the members, but we'll help you go out to bid. We'll help you get the bid review spreadsheet, and but it will be a selection committee of co-op members that choose the installer, the one that's best for the group as a whole. We do put deadlines because people, they can put off, like if you've been thinking about solar for several years, right? It's sometimes it's nice to have this, okay, let me just, let me just do it. This is a good price. So we have a sign-up deadline to join the co-op and then we have a sign-up deadline to sign the contracts by. Um, then, but you sign the contracts with the installer, not with Sun. And then this, the installer does the installation. We can guide and answer questions along the way. Happy to be here for you. And at the end, I love to celebrate. All right. And that's when we come together and, and we find out if there's any advocacy work that we need to do to keep our rights to have solar on our roofs and businesses, our homes. So what's next? As I mentioned, we want you to join the 2023 Richmond Solar Co-op. You can do though that easily at Solar United Neighbors slash Richmond. And there's a button there that says join the co-op. So you join, you fill out the information. You don't have to upload your utility bill then. You can just give that to the installer when we're that closer to the time. And then tell your friends and neighbors about the co-op. This will be recorded. It'll be uploaded onto that page. And so people can listen to this recording at their own leisure. And then we always ask... Um, if any of our partners have anything they want to share. And so the Texas Power Interfaith and Light local chapter, Interfaith Environmental Network of Houston, encourage you to check them out on Facebook at Faith and Environment Houston. 
they they help churches. They're working to help churches go solar in the greater Houston area. Okay, and I think that that is it. Thank you very much. I'm going to stop sharing so that I can look at um, the chat. If you have questions that I don't get to today or you think of them after this, Texas team at soulunitedneighbors.org, TX team is your go-to email. Uh, we have a whole team of people uh, there to respond to your questions. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing. I am going to look at the chat. And I'm going to stop recording, I think, as well.